One of the times he put his hand on me, I think I told him, I was like, don't touch me. It's January 6th, listen, if there was any time to go don't there, worry. don't touch me. And after we'd finished the debate and we stood up and then he went to shake my hand, he was like, yeah, when you told me don't touch me, that was gold. And the Destiny guy, you know, his fake name, blue hair goes, <laughs> you nut. Three minutes to be alive. He goes, you crazy person. Did you guys see the debate with Destiny and Alex Jones? Uh, I prepared a lot for the Ben Shapiro thing. I think the conversation was probably just us getting thoughts on the unironic terrorism, sympathizing now, not just defending stuff like Palestinians, uprising against Israel. They're unironically defending the Houthis, attacking random ass civilians in order to put their push their pressure on Israel. Yeah, I think um, I think there's a few things happening. So far, I, I feel like I have a lot of models for how parts of the world work, and I feel like it's been pretty accurate. Um, uh, and, and it seems to be continuing to be accurate. So one of these things I said is like, if you have groups that are mixed with each other, um, so if you've got like conservatives and you've got uh, liberals that are mixed in with each other, that you get this kind of, th there's this moderating effect on both sides where you kind of have to come to the middle and at least agree on reality, even if you don't agree on prescriptions, there's like some things in here that at least you kind of have to agree on. But the, the problem that happens is as soon as these two groups completely separate from each other and no longer communicate, you enter like bizarro world. And I think a lot of the online left has gotten into that bizarro world um, to where USA bad is literally the defining MO for how these people do international politics. Like as long as they oppose the West or as long as they oppose um, I guess U.S. interest, like it's, they're fine. Like people will support it. Even if that means the Houthis, it wouldn't surprise me if they started uh, supporting Hezbollah. Maybe they already do. Um, or Iran, maybe, I don't know. Um, yeah. How was the Turkey Tom thing? Um, the Turkey Tom stuff was a lot of fun. Uh, he seems like a pretty cool guy. He's pretty interesting. I have a lot, I'm gonna be honest. Uh, <laughs> warning, uh, these takes trigger the I have a lot of respect for young people that are like getting into online content creation. I don't know if I like give them too much respect or whatever, but just because I, you know what, maybe I do actually. Um, I just, I feel like if I was that popular when I was 21, I feel like it would go to my head so much. I feel like it would ruin my mind. But I guess back then people weren't really that popular at all. So maybe there was like a different standard set for everybody. I'm not sure. Don't watch either. Both anime pale in comparison to the number one ranked anime, Corey in the house. Wow, nice 10 year old meme. Um, but yeah, Turkey Tom seems like a pretty cool guy. We chatted a lot about how he does content and everything. Yeah, I thought he was cool. And his camera guy, Eli, was pretty cool too, yeah. Did you and Ben pose for a cute picture? Yeah, we did. He was a cool guy in real life. Oh, and he said he was afterwards, he's like, oh, you're near here. If you ever wanna get, you, you know, lunch, shoot me a text and he gave me his number. So <laughs> me and Ben are basically best friends now. I was super liberal when I was 16, 18, read a little, became conservative, most likely too conservative. I recently discovered you a few weeks back and you're bringing me back towards the middle, thank you. Yeah, no problem, buddy. Do you think that's because Turkey covers mainly YouTube downfalls? He's more aware of the pitfalls and better at avoiding them? Maybe, we talked about that a lot because I was so curious about that. Um, but that was one of the things that he brought up that he was especially, <laughs> Never mind. I was about to make a bunch of edgy jokes, sorry. Um, <clears throat> that because he like has covered so many YouTube downfalls and he's seen so many, he's like really paranoid of somehow falling into that trap, uh, which I imagine a lot of large content creators should be, right? But um, yeah. Um, there wasn't much you could have done during the debate. You were barely ever able to get a word out. So if they weren't informed, it's probably Alex didn't let you. Oh no, um, we'll talk about that. Um, okay, we'll go through uh, Alex Jones. No, stop. Alex Jones debate, the behind the scenes stuff, the Ben Shapiro thing. I can talk a little bit about my Louisiana turkey tom time. You're great at spotting problems in other people's ideas, but how about shifting gears this year and shining a positive spotlight on your own thoughts? Optics wise, people think you're contrarian with no beliefs because you don't build your case race. I know, I thought about this a lot. I actually thought about this yesterday because um, for Ben Shapiro, part of the Ben Shapiro, I think, has a pretty good like foundational philosophy built out when he talks about like how he wants society to look and marriage and blah blah. I guess the reason, I, like, I truly am, I truly am like the ultimate liberal. Like everybody should be free to choose and do what they want. I think the issue I have with trying to build a positive argument for what I want the world to look like is that one, my preferred lifestyle is so far outside of the norm that. I can't, I can't advocate for any part of my life. I, I like to work, you know, 14 hours a day, every single day of my fucking life. I don't like to go outside ever. Uh, if I'm in a relationship, I, it needs to be like an open or poly one because I can't give enough time to my partner and I want to fuck around. 
Uh, I'm not religious at all. I don't have that many friends. I don't care if I'm talking to people. And like everything about my life is like so outside the norm that to build like, if I'm gonna start building a positive case towards some lifestyle, it's gonna be something that I don't even live, which is gonna make it seem disingenuous. I can't, I, don't, I would never advocate for my lifestyle. Um, then don't advocate a lifestyle, advocate a philosophy. I mean, I do, but then it doesn't feel as strong. Like if I say like, oh, you should spend time, uh, you know, like searching for hobbies and stuff that, you know, generally resonates with you, that you like dumping time into, that makes you feel good or happy. Like that doesn't feel as good as listening to somebody else who's like, I started building trains. Everybody should build trains. Trains bring happiness, you know? It, it, having like the personal example is so much better for people, I think. I don't know. Was the Ben Shapiro talk more or less constructive than going on to Scott Podcast? Even though it was a three hour talk, it was a good chat. Lex said that he thought we were both on point, which I guess is good. Um, we just covered so many topics. Oh wait, but we'll talk about this later. Don't make me skip ahead. Destiny, been watching you for several months now. Just want to stop in and say I enjoy your content as well as the stage you've created to facilitate discussions on various topics. Much love, thanks. Oh, you know what felt really cute? What I really enjoyed actually? I said I'm not like a words of affirmation guy. I'm deleting this vibe by the way, fuck everybody. Um, but I, something I really appreciated was something that Ben and Lex both said was they appreciated the research streams. They said that was really cool. You could look at somebody like gather information, collect everything, put together a thought process or use their thought process to put together an argument or whatever. I appreciated that. I thought that was cute. Deleting the bot. Mm -hmm. Boy, Matt, let's go. Boy, Matt is being scared that women are going to use you for money that you don't have. Boy, Matt. Boy, Matt is wanting a girl with zero body count while he slept with the whole town. Boy, Matt is wanting a housewife but having no house. Boy, Matt is chasing a girl that dresses like a bat. <laughs> okay, hold on. Okay. She sounds obnoxious and retarded, but like also true. Bro, the amount of like people in the Red Bull man, oh, she's gonna divorce me and take my alimony and ah, blah, blah, blah. Motherfucker, you're broke. Who, nobody's alimonying shit out of you. What the fuck are you talking, bro? The judge will look at you and give you money, okay? What are you talking about? Bro, who are you guys worried about fucking alimony? Daddy. Then tries to change the way she dresses once you get her. Does that make sense to you? And uh, no, it doesn't. Boy Matt! Boy Matt is wanting women to call you daddy, but expect us to be your mommy. <laughs> Incel inducing, but also very true. Mm -hmm. Oh damn, she's got a million suburbs. This is a big person. Alright. Um on the sixth I did my my debate with the Krasensteins. Krasenstein? Krasensteins? I think they actually said that you can say both. Um, we did the debate, we talked a little bit prior to the debate. Um, when we were talking prior to the debate, they both seemed like they were pretty informed on stuff, which was surprising to me, because my expectations are always very low for debate partners. Um, as we got through the debate, uh, I realized they were very informed on stuff. I was incredibly pleasantly surprised that they were well-spoken. Uh, they kept their minds together, considering how crazy the debate was. Uh, their lines of argumentation were pretty solid. Um, immediately leaving the debate, I was kind of annoyed because I wanted to really, I really just wanted to crucify Glenn and I just needed the ability to like scream and go in on like one line of argumentation. And the three of us were kind of fighting for space a little bit, which is always gonna happen in a two on two or a three on three debate. But as far as like actual debate partners go, uh, I, I think this is probably about as good as it could have been. I think the only difference maybe is if we would have made an agreement before and like, listen, I'm gonna take 10 minutes, you're gonna take 10 minutes, then you're gonna take 10 minutes, okay? But um. Yeah, I thought as far as debate partners went, I think they were about as good as they possibly uh, could have been. My immediate feeling coming out of the debate was actually really negative because I felt like I didn't get to pursue any of my lines of argumentation at all. But when I started reading a lot of the feedback that was showing up on a lot of different social media platforms, uh, I realized that it wasn't. And then I kind of reflected and I was like, no, nah, I actually think it, it went pretty well. It was kind of funny. I was just upset because I didn't, obviously I didn't get to use any of the prep and I didn't get to really uh, take out Greenwald because he kept saying the same stupid thing over and over and over again. Every single time Greenwald opened his mouth, it was to say, yeah, guys, so um, if you've never followed politics before 2016, one of the things you would realize is that the FBI and the CIA have a history of doing exactly this. And that's what he said every single time. I think he literally said that verbatim like four times. And it's like, are you ever going to actually say an original statement or are you going to give like a piece of evidence to support any of your arguments? Or are you going to actually, you know, like justifying it but but no it was just he just said that like uh like five times yeah but i'm like okay um <clears throat> uh 
I do think it was kind of funny that it felt like it. I should go back and do a count. It really did, I'm trying not to have a big head. It really did feel like every single time I spoke, it felt like Alex had to interrupt. I don't, I don't, I feel like the, the I feel like the brothers were able to finish sometimes full statements. I don't know if I finished a single one with Alex Jones there. I don't think I finished even one. Every single time I started to speak, uh, after a few seconds, he would like cut me off. I don't know if it's because he was afraid of me speaking or if he just thought I was easy to cut off or it's just because I was sitting next to him or if it's because we have a little bit of a history so he thought he could be more boisterous, although I can't imagine he would stop with any other person. But um, yeah, I wouldn't mind rolling around in the dirt with Alex Jones for an hour, right? Because I can meme with him if he wants to meme, right? I can do the impersonations and all that. I think it's fun. Hunter Biden laptop. Oh my the God. Weaponization Hillary hearings. Clinton's emails. The censorship. Russia. That. Oh, there's COVID. no Russian connection. That's all. This mRNA word. vaccines. Oh, take your extra. I want you to take all the Global shots. Global warming. How many shots have you had? None yet. You want to take some? Because I can talk over you really easy. That's what you've been doing the whole time. No, no, no. You're I doing. Look forward it. to you dodging you're the question it. again. You're doing, Go ahead. you're doing it. You're doing it. No, you. So, no, you. <laughs> No, you. 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 No, you. You. Both of you. Keep doing it. It's, it's what he does. He, he doesn't have you. facts. Break it up. But also, I need time to, to, I need time to, to present and support real arguments on top of the memeing. So, yeah. I don't know. All in all, I don't have, like, strong opinions on it. It's probably going to be... I wouldn't be surprised if that video is over a million views on my channel. It was a really good video for my channel, I guess. Also, I think I'm the only one that posted it to YouTube, which is good. We tried to stream it, but for whatever reason, it didn't work. Uh, oh yeah, I think it's, is it at a million views? Hold on. Glenn. Um, 1 million, 29,000 views, yeah, so. Uh, thoughts on the moderation? Um, I, I mean, Ian works for Tim Pool, like, what are you gonna do? I thought it was kinda dumb. I think I did remember one of the strategies that I kind of had before, which was to appeal to a moderator more. And I think I actually did that two or three times in this debate, but it didn't seem to help. I think that um, I, I think that I asked, I think that I asked the moderator a couple times. I was like, "Hey, can can you? Am I going to get to finish anything? Can you stop him?" But I don't think he did anything, so yeah, I'm not sure. Um, what do you have to say to people in your community not liking you platforming Alex Jones? I seriously doubt that my community is saying that. There's probably other leftists or other people outside of my community. So yeah. Did you see that Alex's producer was trying to call out for not shaking Alex's hand after the debate? Wait, didn't I shake his hand? I thought I did. Um, beating the dead Sandy Hook horse was a bit much by the brothers at the end. Um... I kind of thought maybe, but actually I don't think so. I When they first brought it up, I was kind of thinking like, oof, are we really gonna go here? But no, actually I kind of think it was, I think the line of argumentation was pretty solid. Um, you said you had psychosis and you couldn't tell when everything was a conspiracy. Like, are you sure you didn't think it was a, a, a like, how do you know you're not experiencing psychosis right now? How do you know everything's not a conspiracy right now because of that, right? I, how do you know if it's a character right now or real? Um, yeah, I think I actually think that that line of questioning was was solid. Also, they knew something about one case that I knew nothing about, and I'm glad that they were there for that. Was it an Owen something, or was it? I think it might have been one of the Oathbreakers. I think because I think that guy all the way on the left, the revolver writer who wrote those horrible articles about Ray Epps, he brought up some guy that had been was it Ch Ch Chodwell or something, or he brought up some guy that had been convicted for no reason. But then the uh, Krasenstein brothers knew exactly who he was talking about. Oh, or was it Owen Schroyer? Maybe I don't. You know, uh, I have no idea who it was, but oh, Thomas Caldwell, that might have been it. Um, I and I didn't look into the uh indictments of those guys, which I probably should have for this, but I figured they would have handled it and they did. So, the Infowars guy said you didn't shake Alex's hand after the debate. Is that true? I am positive. No, I absolutely shook his hand after the debate. I know that I did. Um, I know that I did because, um, Here's one of the things I don't like about Alex Jones more than any other person. I feel like most of the people that I argue with, I think they genuinely believe the shit that they say. I really do feel like Alex Jones is just a showman. I think he's just, I think he's just funny. I, I think he enjoys it. I think he plays it up. Um, Girl Friday on Tuesday donated $50. No one can argue Trump is above the law or can claim immunity after you read this. Wow, thanks. I'll read it in a minute, buddy. Um, yeah, because I remember that, because uh, I remember after the debate, 
So one of the times that uh, I don't like it when people try to physically intimidate me. That drives me crazy. Uh, one of the times he put his hand on me. I think I told him. I was like, don't touch me. Because what, what? Unless Are we going to fight? Like, what are you even doing right now? It's January 6th. Listen, if there was any time to go don't there, worry. don't touch me. Um, and after we'd finished the debate and we stood up and then he went to shook my hand. He was like, yeah, when you told me don't touch me, that was gold. He like he said that to me or whatever. I'm like, I don't like it feels like everything he does is just like a meme. Like, I think he knows he's memeing. He's just like, it's yeah, which is which actually drives me crazy more than a uh, it drives me crazy more than somebody who would like actually believe that shit. Cause I'm like, is this all just like a f-ing joke to you? Because, um, yeah, yeah. Cause like people actually believe this shit. I don't know. That drove me crazy. Uh, yeah. Glenn and Rakita's main argument was everything Trump did was going legally. Couldn't this literally apply to Hitler? Yeah. People on my subreddit were mad that I wasn't bringing up more historical arguments about um, to counter Glenn's like that coups have to involve the military. Um, but the, people were mad that I was bringing stuff up. But the issue is that I can bring things up. And there were two things actually that I really wanted to bring up. Um, but the, but I don't, what I don't want to do is I don't want to float something out there and only get like one sentence out and then not be allowed to elaborate when it gets cut off. So like, for instance, um, I should look this up again. My understanding is that like the enabling act is one of the huge things that allowed Hitler to rise to power, right? Um, it, it, like the fascist way that he did it. But <clears throat> I don't think that the enabling act was like a military takeover of the government, but the only problem was if I bring this up, because I, I, I thought about this on the spot, because I thought about bringing stuff like this up. The problem is that if I bring this up and then he's like, oh, well actually, but there was lots of violence in the streets and the, um, you know, like the Nazis were fighting and killing people and blah, blah, blah already. And then then he's like, oh, well, look, there already is like violence. I, I would have to fight on that ground and I don't have the back and forth time to actually be able to do that. Um, a better example that I wanted to bring up though, since he lives in South America was Bolivia and Evo Morales because there were huge claims that he was trying to quote unquote coup the government because of the um, I believe one was when the the court said that he could run for a was it a fourth term or a fifth term or something um, and then there was that whole like election question uh, relating to all the ballots and everything coming in right I'm not mixing up Venezuela and Bolivia there right um, but that but then for that one I don't know if there would have been like some uh, you know, some attack or some, uh, some like minor piece of violence I missed and then he'd bring that up and then I would have to like fight on that, yeah. Um, yeah, so th- that was my, if I'm talking to him one-on-one, which I think I'm gonna get to in a week, I'll gladly go through these examples. I'm like, would you consider this a coup then? Another thing people brought up was going to be, um, you're going to get wrecked about this, Destiny. He writes about this regularly. If you can point me to anything John, uh, Glenn Greenwald has said that seems intelligent on the topic, feel free to. But I don't think, I haven't seen him write or speak about any of these things in an intelligent manner. It seems like he just parrots like one IQ talking points. Um, <clears throat> uh, also, the um, some people were saying, what about the Ukrainian stuff? Well, the problem with uh, Ukraine is he's going to say, well, the reason why that was a coup was because of the violence that happened that caused Yanukovych to flee the country, even though technically the transfer of power away from Yanukovych happened without violence in their parliamentary body. uh, He's going to say the violence precipitated that, even though that also wasn't that technically wasn't the military called to, though. Right. Yeah, I don't his I mean, like, obviously, the idea that a coup has to have the military involved is stupid, Um, but yeah. Basically, Glenn is saying that in, a, in the debate that a no that no coup would be bloodless without massive violence, tanks in the streets, so on. What's so funny is Glenn lives in my shoulder country, Brazil, and he said that the impeachment of the former president Dilma Rousseff in 2016, which was done by the Congress with no violence, following every judicial step, and so on, was a coup. Here is the quote: Whatever the definition of a coup may be, it fits what was done in Brazil in regards to President Dilma Rousseff. There was involvement from politicians, the judiciary, and the military, among others. The reason it wasn't the alleged financial shenanigans on the day of the voting in Congress. No one mentioned that reason. Oh. Okay, what is this? One minute. That debate Saturday in here with zero hedge folks, great people, with the leftists they brought in. And man, I realized they're not intellectuals. They're not informed. They just act confident. We're sitting here before we go live and there's like a bzz, 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 bzz. And I said, you guys got text messages coming in. Your microwave relay is getting into the wire. You need to keep your phones at least a foot away from the wire. And the Destiny guy, you know, his fake name, Blue Hair, goes, <laughs> you nut. Three minutes to be alive. He goes, you crazy person. Sitting right here. He goes, that's not a microwave oven. 
And I said, it's not a microwave oven. I said, it's a microwave relay and it interferes with the equipment. And he started laughing and laughing and I pulled it up and he wouldn't even look at Wikipedia that shell phones are microwave relays. They don't know anything, people. They're stupid, but they just act confident. They're not fit to clean toilets. That was exactly what happened. He was complaining about the, they were mentioning that the microwave waves from the phone would fuck with the, um, the, the cords or whatever. Um, I didn't think they would. I thought it was dumb, but maybe they do. I could have been wrong on that. I'm not sure. Because Lex complained about it yesterday, so maybe, but I feel like the transmitting power of a phone has got to be so small that there's no way that it actually like fucks up XLR cables, does it? But maybe, who knows? But I also didn't stake much on that because I think he asked me when we were arguing about that. He was like, would you bet a million dollars on that? And I'm like, no, I don't think I would bet a million dollars on that. <laughs> but who knows? Maybe they do. Friend Destiny uh, uh, debating the insurrection with Alex Jones and Glenn Greenwald. Watch it. The degree, I was invited to participate in that debate and I, w I just turned it down. It's just, it's just not my thing, it, you know, long, long story, but uh, the preparation that our friend Destiny undertook and the vapid nature of the arguments from Alex Jones and Glenn Greenwald about, oh, it was, listen, there was violence, but it wasn't that much. And they sort of wanted to steal the election, but they didn't. And so none of this is a concern to us. They're telling us what they're going to do. They are not answering direct questions about denouncing violence. Kalichnikov says, did you guys see the debate with Destiny and Alex Jones? I thought Alex was gonna unleash his inner gorilla and maul Destiny's face. Uh, I just couldn't even with that debate. I didn't know what they were debating. All it was was like, I'm sorry, guys. I can't do it. Did you guys, did you? I, yeah, I, the Krasenstein sitting right there made me want to puke. But they weren't arguing anything. No. Well, but did you see uh, uh, Alex Jones was kind of slapping Destiny's back and he's like, don't touch me, bro. That was the best part of the whole debate. No, no, sure. that, no, you are. No, you are. Yeah, no, you are. No, you That's are. why I'm like, they're not, they're not arguing. <laughs> they're not debating. What would happen is, uh, and there were some good points in there, but I will point out my, the issue I had with it was Alex Jones says, you know, uh, one, two. Why was Jeffrey Epstein trying to obtain microwave licenses, some type of Neuralink deal? I thought it was so that he could transmit signals right into Hillary Clinton's brain. Two, three, A, B, C. And then Destiny would go, X, Y, Z, and it would JKL. And I'm like, they're literally not arguing. Mm -hmm. Alex Jones would say something like, I think this is about the Capitol. And then Destiny would bring up a total non sequitur and be like, uh, I'll, I'll give you an example. Yeah. Uh, or I guess what I mean to say is, <laughs> Oh no, I thought we were gonna get an example. With the debate, I'm expecting someone to be like, Donald Trump should not be president. The 14th Amendment should remove him. That's my position. What is your position? I believe that he should not be removed. Mm -hmm. Now we will argue. They were arguing over whether or not they believe certain news articles were true or fake. And I'm like, that is meaningless. Mm. You were we? Agree with CNN, you don't agree with CNN. What is the point of this? So I just, I'm just like, I don't even know, man. I, I, I can't handle that kind of stuff. That's just me. Yeah, but you really, I mean, Destiny, you saw what happened. His wife, he's going through a divorce. He's really going through a tough time right now. That's rough. I think, I think in, in, if, if I'm yeah. going to debate someone like Destiny, then we can certainly argue if he's got something wrong and I can pull up a source to prove him wrong. And, he, and when he was here, we were talking about um, transgender youth. He told me that he believed my numbers were incorrect. We double checked my numbers were incorrect. I'm totally fine with that. If Destiny says, I believe that uh, Donald Trump is the, is the reason for why the people were there on January 6th, is what he said. My response is, if that is true, do you believe that not being present and not orchestrating an event makes you legally culpable? Instead, what we got is people yelling at each other. And whenever someone would, would make a point, the other person would change the subject. And so I was just like, I don't, I don't even know what's going on. Well, about. internet debates, I don't know if it ever actually changes. You've blackpilled me on needing examples? Yes. Normalize requesting examples for people. But yeah, that was that debate. I guess overall, I think it, I guess it was entertaining at least, even if actually we didn't get much out. And hopefully that's materializing into a Glenn Greenwald debate that the Eli Hassel guy is trying to set up. I think we're figuring out if it's either gonna be next Thursday or Friday. Um, yeah. Uh, Destiny, Tim Pool is wrong. If you're going to debate someone, both people need to be on the same basis to have arguments. You can't debate someone who lives in La La Land. Sure. <clears throat> the, um, let's see, what else? Any other questions about that debate before I move on to the next thing? Um, something that I was trying to talk to Pisco about. Here's an issue that I don't, that I have a really hard time with. Uh, something that I've talked about in the past was, or is something I've talked about is I feel like people's political beliefs don't always correlate to if they're a good or a bad person. That's something that took me a long time to figure out. So just because somebody's a progressive doesn't mean they're a good person. Just because somebody's a conservative doesn't mean they're a bad person. Oftentimes, or, or it seems like generally, these things are just totally not, they're not even correlated. I, they're not, they're definitely not causally related. It's just like people are good or people are bad and then they have political beliefs. However, um, 
one thing that is a little bit, I don't know how to do this. Uh, I'll use Rob Nor as an example. Uh, genuinely, Rob Nor is one of the nicer people I think I've ever interacted with. He is actually an aggressively nice person. I think he sent me props during that debate. He said he thought I did a good job. Um, I, I actually, if you listen to me debate him, I try to stop myself sometimes. Um, and I was like, wait, hold on, you can finish. Because if you listen to our debates, he actually, I do cut him off a lot. And he lets people cut him off. He doesn't even like fight for uh, airtime all the time. He'll let you like cut him off and ramble and shit. Um, Rob is a, is a really nice guy. Uh, I, I don't think I would ever c complain about him on a personal level. I've never heard about him doing anything bad on a personal level. He just seems like an aggressively nice, kind individual. But I don't know how I feel about some people where I, I, I like I could be friends with you because on a personal level you're friendly, but I feel like the political beliefs that you have and that you espouse would literally lead to the destruction of the republic. <laughs> like, I, this is a, I don't know I don't know what's appropriate there. I have a really hard time sorting that out. Like I can understand being friends with somebody who's like uh, pro life, like they they want to make abortion illegal for everybody. Like okay, that's a it's a pretty big you know whatever. Or somebody who's like I think gay marriage should be legal or Ta you know, I'm trying to think of something that affects me directly. White people should be paying higher taxes, I guess. I don't know, fuck. Like certain beliefs like this, but if you literally believe in something that I genuinely believe would cause, like Hinkle. Yeah, like somebody like Jackson Hinkle, I don't think I could ever be friends with that. Like if you're actually spreading Russian propaganda so shamelessly. Yeah, I'm not sure. I have a hard time. It's just something like personally I'm trying to sort out. What do you think of Glenn's response that what about ism slash appeal to hypocrisy is not a concession on the original merits? Do you ever rebuttal to what he said? It is a concession. And when we debate one on one, if he actually accepts and he doesn't cower out of it, I will force that concession. If you're having an argument on a topic, argue the topic. If you want to what about to another person, then say you're you're agreeing with me on that topic. But now you want to see if I apply that standard evenly. That's what you can do. So if I say January 6th was an insurrection, you go, okay, well, if you think that, then surely you believe that BLM riots were an insurrection. Then the next part of the debate is, okay, well, hold on. So you agree J6 was an insurrection? Okay, let's agree there. Now let's go ahead and apply the same standards to the BLM rights and we'll see if I agree here. But you can't do a whataboutism to try to apply my standard that I'm using to argue point A to an entirely different thing, point B, from one particular riot that had like a cohesive plot from two months earlier to a collection of protests and riots in an entire year? Well, how stupid. No. Um, if you, I, there's no, the only reason why you use analogies or metaphors or allegories or any other type or similes or whatever the fuck other comparison you can, the only reason you do this is because it's, you're trying to make something more understandable. I don't need an analogy. Let's just talk about this event. Why, why do we need to analogize? Why do we need to compare this to something else? Let's just talk about this particular event. You can argue the pros and cons. You can argue about this particular thing. And then from there, if you think that I'm being a hypocrite or if you think that my standard isn't, um, isn't being applied fairly, then we can go to other events too. And then maybe when you argue in that other event, maybe you can convince me to change my standard. That would be the way that would go but the i am so 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 tired i'm so tired tired of the constant whataboutisms to every single fucking trump action it is so gross why is trump stealing documents from fucking mar-a-lago that shit's insane what about hillary clinton's email server okay what about trump trying to like flip the election with the fake electors what about russia collusion Okay, do you think that when Trump talks about wanting to open libel lawsuits against the media, isn't that scary? What about the sensing the Hunter uh, Biden laptop story? Do you think that J6 was like an insurrection? Like Donald Trump, like literally was making phone calls during the, what about when Kamala Harris said she'd bail people out of jail? Like, you, you, uh, can, we, can we talk about anything? We can't have a single conversation about any fucking topic. Not a single fucking topic can be debated or, or argued for. Do you not believe in any of the shit that you're defending? Like it's not a single fucking thing that we can talk about. There has to be a whataboutism to every single fucking topic. And then I've got to spend the next five minutes talking about how thick you think Hunter Biden's cock is when it's erect? Like fucking kill me, bro. Can we talk about one fucking thing? And then after we talk about that, if you want, we can talk about the BLM shit. All you want, I'll talk about BLM all you want, bro. I'll talk about Hunter Biden and his dick and the crack fucking scale and every fucking thing you want. But like, let's just do one topic first. It's so cr it's so cringe. The reason why is because people don't want to be on the defensive, so they want to like immediately move to another area where they can attack you on it. And it's like, God, if you you if you have any merit or principle behind what you're arguing, then just defend this fucking point. Defend this. Defend this thing. Tell me why you don't think it was an insurrection. Why Donald Trump was allowed to do it? There are arguments that you can make. There are decent arguments that could be made there if you want to fight on these grounds. I'm not gonna tell you them because fuck you. Do your own research. But there are arguments that can be made there. Nobody even makes them. 
Um, <clears throat> okay, next thing we did. Uh, I went to Louisiana with... Uh, Figglestein says you didn't show up to your debate with him. Is that true? No, he's lying. We'll watch that in a bit. Um, Baker and Kennedy are two guys that do shooting stuff out in Louisiana. They got a big property. They like to teach you like tactical pistol stuff and everything. That sounds way lamer than it actually is. Uh, they're really cool dudes. Me and Tom uh, and another friend and then his camera guy shot a whole bunch of footage out there. Uh, that was a lot of fun. Uh, there's not much to talk about for that. Um, ben Shapiro, I prepared a lot for that debate. I think, um, when is the Turkey Tom thing gonna release? I don't know, maybe within a month? Uh, I don't know how long it's gonna take. Uh, I prepared a lot for the Ben Shapiro thing. I think the conversation was probably just us getting a feel for each other. We weren't, um, it wasn't like a screaming match. We, the conversation was regulated really well. We didn't cut each other off. There wasn't anything crazy dramatic. Um, I, I wish we could have talked for, I think we talked for about three hours and there was, we went over a lot of different topics. I feel like it would have been fun to spend literally three hours on one particular area, but we kind of jumped around a bit, but I thought it was a pretty decent conversation. We'll see how, we'll see like what comes out from that. Did you talk about Biden policy much? A little bit, but I, I would have really liked to drill down on certain Shapiro arguments. Like I think one of the things we debated was like, who is a more divisive president? And he's saying Biden is more divisive than Trump. I'm like, really? And then like he would cite like, well, look at the popularity ratings. And I'm like, okay, but like, that's because every Republican loves Trump. His popularity is never gonna waver with conservatives. And also if you're gonna see like who's less divisive, why not see like who actually passed more bipartisan legislation? Um, and then, but then I feel like we'd always like jump to new topics so we didn't get to like super drill down on anything, but. How long does Lex take to release his shows? Uh, about three hours. Or I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Uh, somebody said, how long did it last? It was three hours. How long does it take for him to release? About a week, I think he said. How much you talk about Gen 6 related stuff? Um, a, a bit, maybe like 20 minutes. Thoughts on Ben as a person? Uh, I mean, as cool, or as, in terms of all the people I've talked to, he seems like the most like grounded, real life human being that's not like insane so I appreciate that <laughs> did you talk to Alex afterwards <clears throat> you mean after the Alex Jones debate no uh, I shook his hand and then I basically left because I wanted to go with Turkey Tom and I had other things to do yeah was there any trans talk no not no Talk about systemic racism, I think a little bit. How would you compare Ben's combo to Alex? The Ben combo was obviously way better. It was way more substantial, so. <sighs> Clicky, historian regarding conspiracy theorists. I don't know where this got linked. It might've been mm -hmm. in my subreddit, but I actually listened to this whole thing. I think it's very good. I wish I had a way to explain this in like 20 seconds. I think you mean substantive? Is that what I said? Did I say substantial? It's substantive is what I meant, yeah. He meant, did you talk with Lex after the Ben debate? Oh yeah, me and Lex had about an hour and a half shoot. And I think he, um, I think he'll tag that onto the end of the video, so. Did Ben know anything about you prior to the debate? Yeah, he watched a little bit for a couple of weeks to prepare, or just to know who I was, yeah. Will you watch the Ben convo on stream? Ugh, watch myself debate on stream, maybe. Do you get to upload the video to your own channel or does August wait for Lex to upload it? I'm almost positive Lex is gonna want that video. He flew all the way out here for it and he did a lot of work setting it up, so. Did you become friends with Ben? <clears throat> he said we can get food if I'm in the area, okay. So who knows? What's the story behind this tweet? I just, I think the biggest, I think I just made fun of Tom's haircut for like five days. We went to Applebee's, mmm. You were super drunk there, right? Here? No. I was sick or getting sick. I don't like to drink or do anything when I'm getting sick. Now, there was that one last question. Norm Finkelstein. Is it Finkel? Is it Stein or Steen? Finkelstein? Roast Destiny after the Israel debate fell through. 
Why don't you check your history in your YouTube Night Rose? Because I have that shit turned off. Oh, now it shows up. I thought I clicked this before. You know, you brought up a destiny. Now look, guys, I just turned 70. I'm not debating. I'm not debating heartthrobs. I, I studied my entire life since I was around 20. It's on a bookshelf. I didn't do much more with my life than read. So this guy, Destiny, whatever he is, I don't know what Destiny is. I know these characters in the web. Destiny, Charlemagne, I don't know what, what, what are these people? <laughs> you know, in my day, there was a guy named Fabian. <laughs> what? <laughs> Way before your time. <laughs> okay, there was Cher. There was, you know. But in general, I prefer two names. Uh, just keep what is it? I'm not making fun of these guys. I don't know these guys. They might be cool, okay? And growing YouTubers and all of that is fine. I'm not trying to like, I'm not trying to like call somebody out or like shit on somebody for their audience size. But what is this like? I'm not going to waste my time talking to Destiny, but he'll go on like 30,000 subscriber channels and have chats with that. It just seems so weird. How does he? He's saying you're like Prince? Oh, I thought he was referring to Charlemagne the God. I don't even, bro, I don't even know. I'm not, I don't even know what this guy's talking about. Jesus Christ. It's me grounded. These guys ride that Jimmy Dore dick straight to 16,000 YouTube subs. Jesus. In general, I prefer two names. Uh, just keeps me grounded, if I might say so. So this character Destiny, he wants to debate me, he wants to debate me. People say, you know, be careful of Destiny. Be careful of Destiny. I mean, I'm, I'm from the generation where you are my destiny. <laughs> Paul Anka. I, I'm not going to get, I debate Alan Dershowitz. I debate Israel's foreign minister, uh, Shlomo Ben Ami. I'm not exactly afraid of Destiny, but I finally agree, I finally agree. And then he didn't show up for the agreed appointment. And it was, I think the appointment was like eight. And then at 1.30 a.m. he wrote me, sorry. Uh, no, guy, don't talk to me that way. What do you think? I'm one of your groupies? I'm one of your flunkies? That you tell me at 1.30 a.m. I'm sitting on the computer waiting for him? He don't show up? No, I don't go for that. I, As a young man, I, did, I wanted to be treated with the respect. Do a, per a human being. You know, just do a human being. You're not going to treat me that way. And anyhow, Destiny, I hate to break this to you. I don't really want to debate you. I don't need to debate Wikipedia. Not my. At least Bill Maher had the good sense to say, you know what? I'm not sure if those visuals are going to work very well with Finkelstein. So maybe we shouldn't do this debate. But he he has, I understand, I don't know. But he has his cult, uh, cult following. I'm not really interested in it. So I'll admit, I, I opted out after that. I didn't want to do it anymore because I'm not debating the destiny. I, I'd rather debate somebody who has two names and uh, who's a serious, a serious scholar. Uh, or at least if you're not a serious scholar, then show a little humil humility. If I were to walk into a debate on astrophysics, you know what I would do? I would sit and listen. Yeah, yeah. Well, I would go like this, you know, the kid in the class who always has an opinion. <laughs> no. Yeah. Yeah, it was interesting. Uh, I think a couple of years ago, Professor Richard Wolff actually debated destiny. And in my opinion, the kind of like academic... Why go over Epstein's death if you're just going to disagree that he was murdered? Bro, I just follow the facts. That's all I do. Are you triggered because you're already upset that you realize that your conspiracy theory is built on bullshit? I've looked into it a bit in the past. I'll look into it again. Hey, maybe there's more evidence that I didn't see. I'll be like, oh, wow, I didn't consider that before. Versus internet debate bro style. It didn't really mesh anyway, so I'm not sure how productive it really would have been, to be honest with you. It was interesting. Uh, I think a couple of years ago, Professor Richard Wolf actually debated Destiny. And in my opinion, the kind of like academic versus internet debate bro style, it didn't really mesh anyway. So I'm not sure how productive it really would have been, to be honest, I Professor. I was told that Richard Wolf, he was, uh, he was weak. Uh, and there, there's a reason for that. And you have to. I, 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 oh, no. Jesus, really? I would like to try to convey the reason. The reason is there's a tendency to only speak to the converted. And then you just don't. You, you don't have a sense of how to answer the arguments on the other side. I don't do that. I don't speak to the convert. I'm, I'm, I think it's, I've always believed that the devil's advocate function is a very useful one um, because it forces you to confront arguments which otherwise you would ignore or when they haven't even occurred to you. That's why the greatest living scholar, the greatest scholar in the Nazi Holocaust, he, he, since past, his name was Raoul Hilberg. He taught at the University of Vermont and he was by a wide margin the most uh, knowledgeable in the Nazi Holocaust. And oddly, he. Damn, Borden.
Do you potentially have a debate with Norman Finkelstein? <laughs> if you wanted to, yeah, of course, yeah. Okay. Um, I know it's been floated around online a bit, but would you debate Destiny? I hosted a debate between Destiny and Cenk Huger uh, the other week, and it went really well. Mm -hmm. I asked him live on that, would you he debate Destiny? And he said he would do. I was wondering if you would be willing to debate him. I mean, no, asked I, him, would you debate you? And he said yes. I, I offered to debate him once. He didn't show up, and I don't feel... And I and don't I'll, feel I'll moderate it if... Uh, Excuse me? I, I don't mind moderating it between you and Destiny. No, uh, with all due respect, Eli, mm -hmm. um, I don't want in any way patronize you or condescend to you. Uh, so I want to choose my words with care. Uh, there's a genocide occurring in Gaza. For me, it's not about views and sharing. Oh my God, the same talking points. Of course I want to reach as broad an audience as I can, but I don't want to participate in media spectacles. Uh, I wouldn't debate a person named Destiny. I wouldn't debate a person named Charlemagne or all of these media characters. It, it's not who I am, and I think it's disrespecting of the people who are dying to engage in a media spectacle in order to accumulate more likes. Uh, I don't even know anything about the social media, but more views, likes, and shares. Uh, I, I, I just don't part participate in that. I've debated Benny Morris on air. I've debated Israel's foreign minister, Shlomo Ben Ami. I've debated um, a large number of characters. Most of them won't debate me, but that's not my problem. Uh, but there's a difference between that and you know, Shlomo Ben Ami, the Israeli foreign minister. Actually, that was substantive. Uh, but there's a difference between that and a media spectacle. And I don't want to be part of it, first of all, because it's demeaning of the people in Gaza. They should become the object of a media spectacle. And second of all, with all due respect, it's the meaning of me. I devoted the whole of my adult life uh, to studying the Israel-Palestine conflict. And I'm not particularly proud about that fact, incidentally. I wish my intellectual range were much broader, but that's not the way my life turned out. Uh, I'm not debating a character whose knowledge of the subject is taken from Wikipedia. It's not, not serious in my point of view. And somebody who goes around the web, uh, I want to debate Finkelstein. And apparently he had these kinds of, I don't know, I've never watched him. I don't know who he is. Uh, had these seminars with his cult following where they were looking up facts together. That's not scholarship. Scholarship is a, I can tell you from a lifetime's experience, it's a very solitary exercise. Uh, I'm not debating a character whose knowledge of the subject is taken from Wikipedia. It's not, not serious in my point of view. And somebody who goes around the web, uh, I want to debate Finkelstein and apparently he had these kinds of I don't know, I've never watched him, I don't know who he is, uh, had these seminars with his cult following where they were looking up facts together. <laughs> what, is, what is he talking about? That's not scholarship. Scholarship is a, I can tell you from a lifetime's experience, it's a very solitary exercise. I mean, sitting in a room with books and poring over them and with intense concentration. It's not a media spectacle to study, to cogitate, but to organize what I'm told, I don't know. I'm told he organized this. Followers, let's find things to you know gotcha things with Finkelstein. As far as, as far as I know, you're referring to a live stream where he look he does he does research. Yeah, I have no idea. Telling you what people told me. I okay. have no idea. You don't even know what happened to a lifetime of pouring over books and facts and now I'm telling you what people told me? Okay. Okay. I don't know I don't know who Destiny is. Uh, but that's not what I'm about. Why wouldn't you get easy dunks on me if I have a huge audience? I don't just understand. Quick point before I've never understood that from people. I, and I'm I'm trying to think if I genuinely, maybe I just have like a different approach to it or I view it differently in my mind. But like in my mind, an uneducated, smug person with a huge audience that wants to debate me, that's like gold. Like, yes, I will gladly go on your larger platform and school the fuck out of you. Like, yeah, of course. Why would you not want to do that? I don't understand. Unless he thinks it's literally just going to be like a screaming match. But I think I've proven well enough that I haven't done that. Are you not just confirming his critique of you doing this for spectacle? When you call something for spectacle, I mean, like, what are you implying there? Right? I mean, like, to some extent, all public debate is a spectacle. But, I mean, 
for, for what? Like, if you feel like an issue is important and you want to get a lot of eyes on it, like, are you not, is that, that's a form of like making it a spectacle. Unless he's saying like, you just want to make it a spectacle because you don't care about the issue. I mean, I mean, I, I don't understand. Your goal when you do public debates is you want to get more eyes on your opinion. That's the whole point. That's why he writes like pop history books instead of just being a historian. That's why he goes on. Like, you want to talk about spectacle, like half the videos I feel like that are popular about him are him like owning people or like that one girl in the college dorm or not dorm, the um, auditorium or whatever. I, I think those are weak. I don't know. I feel like when people re resort to like those like level one attacks, like, oh, you're just trying to... You're just doing it for spectacle. You're just a debate lord. Just like, like, I mean, yeah, he went on Pierce Morgan. Like, was this the apex of academic debate? 